to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III encourages us to pray without ceasing throughout the day, every day, for the glory of God. Welcome to another Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. Broadcast number 229. As always... It is so good to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today, by the grace of God, I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled, If You'll Take Time for Prayer, by an unknown author. <coughs> Pardon me. Through every broken dream you have harbored in your heart, through every fear and loneliness which makes your teardrops start, through every burden dragging you beneath loads of despair. Jesus will gent gently lead you if you take time for prayer. Through troubles which cause you to walk frustrated ways, through every cloud of darkness which blots the thought of praise, through every river reaching out to drown your soul in care, Jesus will gently lead you if you take time for prayer. And ladies and gentlemen, listening today around the world, the simple purpose of this broadcast is to motivate, encourage, and exhort you to simply just pray. This radio broadcast is not necessarily for people who already know the secret and power of prayer and who actually practice genuine prayer on a regular basis. <clears throat> Pardon me. Rather, it is for those who may find it difficult to pray or for people who claim they do not have time to pray. I am convinced that most Christian people do not need to learn how to pray or to be told how to pray or even when to pray. They simply need to just pray. If I can encourage you to just pray, yes, in the spirit of Nike, just do it. Uh, prayer is one of those things that people like to work up a feeling for. They want to have a nudge or, or something inside, some kind of tickle down their spine to move them along for prayer or to pray. And my friend, that's just not how it works, particularly, particularly for those who have been saved a while. God wants you to take the initiative to, to step out by faith and to pray whether you feel like it or not. But here is what I promise you. If you would do that, if you would make that choice to step out by faith and to have faith in God and to begin praying to Him ever so humbly, uh, I believe all sorts of wonderful things will begin to happen in you and for you, in your family and for your family. And uh, also, whatever God has called you to do in life, you may be a doctor, you may be a lawyer, you may be an Indian chief, you may be a nurse, you may be a medical tech, 
you may uh, be a teacher or work on a garbage truck, whatever the case, start your day with God in prayer. And I guarantee you, your day will be better. We do not pray based, ladies and gentlemen, upon our subjective feelings. Rather, we pray based upon objective facts in the Word of God. And that leads me to my first station, the Word of God. Our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Matthew 7, 7, which reads, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now allow me to share with you some important points regarding this verse from Matthew Henry's commentary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Prayer is the appointed means for obtaining what we need. He says, Pray, pray often, make a business of prayer, and be serious and earnest in it. Ask as a beggar asks alms, ask as a traveler asks the way, seek as for a thing of great value that was lost, or as the merchant man that seeks goodly pearls, knock as he that desires to enter into the house knocks at the door. For you see, sin has shut and barred the door against us. By prayer we knock. Whatever you pray for according to the promise shall be given you. If God see it fit for you, if God see it fit for you, uh, and what would you have more? This is made to apply to all that pray aright. Every one that asketh receiveth, whether Jew or Gentile, young or old, rich or poor, high or low, master or servant, Learn or unlearned, all are alike welcome to the throne of grace, if they come in faith. It is explained by a comparison taken from earthly parents, and their readiness to give their children what they ask for. Parents are often foolishly fond, but God is all wise. He knows what we need. He knows what we desire and what is fit for us. Let us never suppose our Heavenly Father would bid us pray and then refuse to hear or give us what would be hurtful. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator quote today is from Alexander White. He said, if you find your life of prayer to be always so short and so easy and so spiritual as to be without cost and strain and sweat to you, you may depend upon it. You have not yet begun to pray. <clears throat> Our prayer motivator devotional today is part four of our series titled How to Be Definite in Prayer from that great prince of prayer, Dr. John R. Rice, uh, author of the book Prayer Asking and Receiving, uh, referring to and talking to the simplicity that is prayer uh, that God has wrought. 
and dear friend, make no mistake about it. God made things simple for his people. Uh, <clears throat> not always simple to do, but simple in nature. Prayer is a very simple, basic thing. There's nothing hard about it. We just need to do it. And Dr. John R. Rice goes on to say, Years ago, I went for a series of revival services to the First Baptist Church of Peacock, a little town in West Texas. That Midwest Texas town was in the clutches of a terrible drought. It had not rained for months, so crops were utterly ruined. Even normally, it was too dry to raise corn. But in that particular year, even drought-resistant crops, as milo, maize, and cane, were blighted, and their tops were all sear brown and dead. Water holes were dried up. The pastures were in some places almost as barren as a floor, kind of like the drought that we're having now in Texas. Frequently, as one drove down the lane, he could smell dead cattle that had starved to death. Some farms were deserted, and people had traveled far to get work and earn a little income to live on. As we went into the revival services, my heart got more and more burdened about the barren country. I felt that God wanted to show his power. So I promised God that as soon as the Christian people began to be aroused and concerned over their sins and over their lost loved ones, I would call a meeting of confession and prayer, begging God to send a rain as well as a revival. God's Holy Spirit took hold of the people, and they began to have broken hearts, to seek God and to want souls saved. I took courage and called a meeting for prayer telling the people I felt definitely led to pray for rain. I felt that the Holy Spirit had put the matter in my heart. Many agreed to pray with me. We publicly asked God to send a great rain and to send it within 24 hours. I announced to the public that we would expect a rain in 24 hours and that if it came after that time it would not be the one we were asking for and that we would not count our prayers answered. There was no evidence of any kind in the heavens that we should expect a rain. The next day the sun beat down pitilessly on the barren land. At the morning service that weekday, we again prayed for rain, begging God to send it by the night service so that all could know he answered definite prayers. I announced that if the rain did not come within 24 hours, it would not be an answer to our prayers. God put it in my heart to pray that definite prayer, and I felt that he would hear it. Afternoon, my wife set about to wash some clothes. She sent our little girl Grace, then five years old, to borrow a tub of a neighbor woman who had offered it. It was about two o'clock. Suddenly black clouds began to roll over swiftly from the southeast. In a few minutes there came a mighty wind 
Mrs. Rice had to rescue the little girl and catch the wash tub rolling across the prairie. The tabernacle where we had been meeting was blown off the blocks that supported it. Downtown in the stores, the scoffers and the wicked had been saying, praying for rain may be all right in East Texas, but it won't work in West Texas. That fool young preacher will see, they said. There will not be a rain by tonight. Suddenly, the plate glass windows of a store were blown in. And then there came a flood of rain. The scoffers were scattered. Then there was a great downpour over the town and for about five miles in each direction. What a rain it was. We had services that night in the Methodist church. People filled the seats, then sat in the windows. All the building was crowded, but they did not come in their cars. The roads were deep in mud, but in farm wagons and buggies and on horseback and wading with rubber boots. God sent the rain, and we had a right to be definite and bold about it because the Holy Spirit had put it in our hearts, wait on God. Wait on God. Submit to the Holy Spirit. He knows how to pray according to the will of God. So let him lead your praying as well. Now, dear friend, it is time for us to pray. Please remember the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Now, friend, please join me in prayer. Holy Father God, thank you, Lord, for reminding us Thank you, Lord, for reminding us to be definite in prayer, to be specific in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your holy word. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for the gift of thine Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you most of all for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. We give you glory, praise, and honor. We individually, wherever we are in the world, willingly confess our own sins, our own faults, pride, rebelliousness, stubbornness, lies, and dishonesty, deceit, grieving your Holy Spirit, hating others. Lord, whatever the sin might be, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of all of our sins. Help us to turn away from our sins and to repent. Lord, we pray for genuine revival in this nation. Lord, we pray for genuine revival in your church have thine Holy Spirit to bring great conviction. Lord, we pray for the healing of this nation. Oh, Lord, in every way, if you are planning to tarry your coming, we pray, Lord, for healing of this nation. Lord, if it's your will to come back today, to come back soon, Lord, we uh, pray for that and uh, look for your soon return. Holy Father God, we're praying here, my family and I are praying, and our ministry uh, and uh, I are praying, Lord, for three million souls to come to know you as Savior before it is eternally too late. Lord, we pray 
that you would open their blinded eyes and stop their deaf ears, help them to see the gospel. And Lord, in a day, over a few days, over a few weeks, however you see fit, over months, years, we pray for three million people around the world to receive you as their Savior into their hearts, to believe on you for their salvation, that you shed your blood for their sins, you took their place, that you died for them, was buried and rose again. Lord, we also pray for each and every pastor, missionary, minister, evangelist around the world, all of your servants, we pray for them, that you would strengthen them, all who believe your holy word, and all who do your holy word, anointing them from on high, encourage their hearts, heal their marriages, and their families, deliver them from their sins and their temptations. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts from your servants. And Lord, we also pray for the President of the United States of America and all governmental officials in this country and governmental officials around the world. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Lord, we pray that you would give this President wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight. We pray for the salvation of all of our governmental leaders. Now, Holy Father God, we pray for three people who have sent in um, prayer requests. Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Maria uh, in Mexico. We pray that you protect her and show her the way that she should go. We pray for the salvation and protection of her entire family. We pray also, Lord, for Michelle in independence. Heal her of her medical condition and make her whole again. Help her to quit smoking and bring her a true friend in her life and lord we pray for katerina in serbia we pray lord that you strengthen the relationship between her and john m and remove all barriers we pray lord that you lead god and direct them to be uh, faithful to you holy father god we pray for the following people who have received you into their hearts we pray lord that you would confirm them and strengthen them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled Christians that you want them to be. We pray specifically, Lord, for Ida in West Java, Indonesia. We pray for Danielle in Massachusetts. We pray for Yarid in Bello, Colombia. Now, Lord, we also pray for those who have rededicated their life to you through this ministry, Gospel Light Society. We rejoice with them in this decision and we pray that you would strengthen them in the faith to stand strong with you. We pray specifically, Lord, for Sherry in Lahore, Pakistan, Sharon in Kerala, India, Omotola in Lagos, uh, Nigeria. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you'll have all of these things to come to pass. We know that you will. We believe it in our hearts uh, because it is according to your will. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friend, if you are listening today to this broadcast, somehow someone in, uh, turns you on to this broadcast and uh, you like what you hear but you don't fully understand because maybe you have never received Jesus Christ into your heart yet, please notice these verses that I'm getting ready to quote to you and read to you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Dear friend, if you're in this world, God loves you. So much so, he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou, you, shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, friend of mine, if you are willing to trust Christ as your Savior today, please pray with me the following prayer. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life forever. Amen. Now in closing, dear friend, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, if rather you have received Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior today, please contact us uh, if you would like to today so that we can send you a free copy of our pamphlet titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Uh, this will help you get started in your Christian life. Until next time, remember, dear friend, pray, think, do. God bless you.